Boom! We are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Life is a Chad YouTube channel. And I thank all of you for being here, wherever you may be. And of course, however you may be listening. First and foremost, I want to thank everybody who has decided to jump on the ship that this channel is. Uh, it continues to grow. Uh, we just recently hit a benchmark, and I really am grateful. You know, I think a lot of YouTubers out there, um, not that this is necessarily the metric that I go by, but it's I, I think it's interesting to point out. Um, I think a lot of them, once they reach a certain point, uh, maybe they never had it to begin with, uh, but they they forget what got them there in the first place. And they start to have this attitude as if it's solely them and they are solely the reason for all the success and they don't have to thank anybody or be gracious or grateful to anybody. And that's just not me. I, I'm happy for everybody who jumps on this ship. Uh, even if you don't subscribe and you just watch a video, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it. Um, you know, technology really is a tool and it just depends on how you use it, uh, how one wields it. So this, I just wanted to say thank you. If you're not sub, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Support a fellow Patriot out. Support your boy. Like, comment, share. And without further ado, let's get into this. I brought out the LRG shirt. <laughs> it's been a while since I've worn an uh, LRG shirt. Um, but this video is going to be about Steven Crowder and that whole situation with the daily wire i'm so fucking glad that i did not go totally i that i did not totally and unapologetically lean in to stephen crowder's side so very happy that that was not the case um even with all of the new information that has come out i still stand by everything that i said uh, it's just now I can give you a more certain answer about what is going on and a more well-rounded take for my thoughts on it, with regards to my thoughts on it. Um, first and foremost, and I said this in the last video, Steven Crowder was one of the first uh, conservative YouTubers that I watched. Uh, I've said before that the normal progression, in my opinion, is... Um, you know, whether you have always been a conservative or you are a new, a newfound conservative, the normal progression is Steven Crowder, uh, Ben Shapiro, kind of the, the vanilla wafer type conservatives, um, that, you know, are good for business and all that bullshit. Then, uh, you progress to maybe a Gavin McInnes, um, a little bit of Sam Hyde, maybe a little bit of Alex Jones. Then if you go even past that, you go to like Nick Fuentes uh, and you start leaning into uh, Cozy, Cozy.TV. So that's kind of the normal progression. Um, now that I'm older, I certainly do not agree with Steven Crowder on everything. I agree with him about a lot. I If I had to state what he is i would say he tends to be a neoconservative he is definitely a neocon uh and it makes sense you know he has his dad who's like a 1980s um from you know from the 1980s you know detroit michigan like his dad reminds me of like my grandpa and you know who is from the midwest and like their generation the boomers definitely swallowed the neocon pill for sure. So that's what he is. Um, and, you know, I think he does good things. Um, he's certainly not perfect. Uh, point is, he's a pretty vanilla conservative content creator. I personally don't think he's that funny. Um, you know, that's a big shtick of his. Sometimes his show can be 
borderline uncomfortable because, you know, I, I feel like Steven tries to lean into the, the comedic element where uh, when in reality, he's far more comfortable and more talented in the pocket of talking just politics and speaking normally. But anyways, the situation that is at hand is Steven Crowder made a video. We'll go ahead and share the screen uh, discussing his whole situation with the Daily Wire. Um, and basically he said that Con Inc. is ripping a bunch of conservative creators off and that they are no better than the they're no better than the big tech giants who censor uh tons of conservative voices and he went into all of that you guys can see the title i didn't want to do this it's time to stop um he uh, offered he offered to build his own platform and take on new conservative content creators and not take their revenue. And it basically came off as this very, um, if you only watch that video, it came across as taking one for the team, you know, a, a very populist fighting for the little guy type of thing and righteous type of ordeal. And I, in the first video, I even said, like, it was kind of surprising to see Steven do that because he's not a Nick Fuentes or an Alex Jones. In fact, that is some of his biggest disagreements is with those types of people because they push back against the uh, Republican establishment, against Con Inc. and things like that. So it was surprising. And I... I stated that and it turns out that there was a reason he was doing that dollar dollar bills y'all that is what was going on steven crowder um basically declined he was he was working at the blaze he stopped working at the blaze then he was in negotiation talks with the uh with the daily wire the two biggest alternative conservative media companies would be the Blaze and Daily Wire, okay? Uh, you know, Fox News is obviously very, very big, but I wouldn't consider them alternative um, uh, conservative media. And he was in negotiations with the Daily Wire. And the long and the short of it is the negotiations ended and that is what brought forth Steven Crowder making a, uh, this video stating that, you know, the Daily Wire was basically this uh, no better than these big tech giants in, in some of their actions. Um, but of course, what I didn't know at the time is that Stephen, the, the, the negotiations um, had ended for, a, a, you know, months ago. Um, the recordings that Stephen Crowder decided to expose you know, were taken months after uh, the negotiations ended. Uh, furthermore, this guy that Steven Crowder recorded his conversation with was a friend of his for several years. So when I look at this, honestly, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure Steven Crowder is going to be able to survive this. If he survives this, the only reason will be because he is such a well-known commodity at this point. He is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, most well-known conservative voice in the world right now. Okay, the the top people I would say would be Nick Fuentes, um, you know, Stephen Crowder, Ben Shapiro, um, uh, Tucker Carlson. Those would be some big names. Candace Owens is pretty big. So he kind of stabbed, not kind of, he stabbed his fucking friend in the back and basically played this righteous angle, righteousness angle, no, righteous angle in route to try, in route to trying to get people 
over to his mug club, which he had had before, but the Blaze took over when they bought the rights to his show. That's how things work, people. When people pay you money, usually they're paying you money so that they can have the rights to the stuff that you make. It's business. It's how it works. And, you know, the whole thing was a fucking ploy to get people to 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 go, yeah, screw Con Inc. Yeah, fuck Con Inc. Conservative Inc. fucking sucks. <laughs> Which I'm sure, I'm sure he did see an uptick in in Mug Club sub subscribers. I'm sure he did. But this was nothing. This had nothing to do with trying to fight for the little guy. This had nothing to do with exposing conservative ink or anything like that. Because the reality of the situation is, Stephen Crowder is as mainstream conservative as it gets he's as establishment conservative as it gets is he the most establishment conservative no but he's up there so what he did was dirty as fuck it really was he did all of that to try and get people over to his new website and to create a new subscription base. And the reality of the situation is honestly, the Daily Wire, like at first when I heard it from his mouth, and this just goes to show that that this is why you always, if you can, reserve judgment until you hear both sides of the argument. Honestly. Because initially. Yeah, it sounded like, fuck, Daily Wire is no better than big tech. But when you hear their explanation and, and you just kind of take a step back and think about it, guys, Facebook, Twitter, and, and all these big, big tech agencies, whatever you want to call them, are the, are the thing right now, okay? And if you don't have... If you don't have access to those companies and, and have a way to get your message out through those companies, you are substantially limiting your impact. Okay. And furthermore, if the Daily Wire were to buy my show right now, the rights to my show, what would be the biggest way that they get paid? Well, through ad revenue through advertisers wanting to pay on my show or, or pay to have a spot on my show for the viewers of my show to, to watch a little bit of their fucking commercial. If you get censored and get taken down for whatever reason, yeah, you're going to lose res revenue. You're going to, you're, it's going to be a big hit to daily wire in this example. So it makes sense their kind of line of thinking down that path. Now, I don't want to go too far down all that rabbit hole. I suggest you watch uh, Mark Dice's video on that. He explains it really, really well. But my just kind of, and this is, I think this is going to be the last time I talk about this. My closing thoughts on this are, are simple. It's, I know there's so many young men out there who are like myself, who wish that there was someone that they could legitimately look up to. But unfortunately, more often than not, human beings are highly flawed and they get exposed. And more often than not, especially in the conservative media realm, what begins as good intentions ends up turning into a money-making machine. And when that happens, it all becomes virtually meaningless. It all becomes fluff. And, and that has been like one of my biggest critiques of, you know, conservative content creators is it's all fluff. Like it's all this 
information and, and this outrage without legitimate action to, to fix some of our country's massive problems. And you could say, well, Chad, <laughs> well, life is a Chad. Well, what are you doing? And that's a fair question. And, and I'll tell you right now, I, I really don't go out there and change the world necessarily, but at least I'll admit it. At least I'll have the balls to admit that as opposed to getting you guys all riled up and to the point where, you know, you might be willing to lose your job or fucking get your name on, on this list or this list. Like I would never want that. So definitely the conservative side of things has a major problem with the message versus the the business side of things because more often than not the business side of things prevails and the message gets lost and it's it's just this fluff and with Steven Crowder that was exposed even more so because he camouflaged it as some righteous in indignation when in reality he was just trying to make money yet again for his show which I don't have a problem with that necessarily. Like if you want to make money from what you do, fine, no problem, but don't wrap it up in some righteous gesture. So I don't, I don't know where Steven Crowder goes from here. Um, I think, you know, he'll, he'll probably survive this just because he has such a big name already, but this was not good. And if I think back to some of the other shit that, it, that I have, you know, gone down the rabbit hole of listening to with regards to Steven, he definitely has a pattern of fucking some people over and not being the most authentic, in, you know, or nice or righteous individual that, that, that one can think of. Remember, I don't, do you guys remember, uh, well, there's Owen Benjamin, you know, you can, Go listen to his takes on Steven Crowder. Uh, there was the 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 Spen, the computer guy. It was it was actually a pretty fucking funny bit that they had. One of the few funny bits that they had. Um, and Sven left, and there's a whole backstory on that. And then not gay Jared. There's a whole backstory on that too. So I think Steven Crowder is is a little sketch he's a little sketch guys um so it, it's just it really is my main takeaway from all of this is that it really is just too bad that with so many things crumbling and so many people truly loving this country and what it represents and wanting there to be something that they can grab a hold of, someone that they can grab a hold of and say, we're with you. Things are messed up and we are with you. They so desperately want that. I know that because I have, have um, yearned for that myself. It'd be nice to be able to see somebody do something and say, you know what, that's a reason for optimism right there because this guy is going to get us to where we need to go and shit is going to get back on track. But it doesn't really exist. And so, you know, another recommendation I would have is to not, and I, and I even say this towards myself to not get too obsessive or too into the message of one individual person because they that individual person will always let you down. And historically, that's the case as well. It's the message, the, the, the foundation, conservatism, traditional values. That is what you need to back above all else. Not an individual who spews certain elements of that out, but the, but the actual the actual theology, the actual worldview, that is what you back. And that is what you portray outwardly into the world. 
So, yeah, this is uh this is a a, a big thing, guys. Um, you know, this has happened time and time again. Conservative media just eats itself up. It's it's this big money making machine, and um, you know, it's just too bad. Uh, pretty funny, you know, pretty funny story. Uh, mad respect to Mark Dice for having the balls to to expose the truth of this because they're still I I was even still seeing a lot of people who were like still defending Steven even though it's so obviously not that one-sided like he is his side of things is not so so obviously the case um and it's it's disheartening to see so many people blindly following what he has said um so, you know, I'm not counting Steven Crowder out like fully. I'm not willing to say that he's a shitty guy or, you know, that he has no place in the conservative movement. I'm not necessarily willing to do that. But uh, this is not a good look. This is certainly not a good look. Um, and we certainly have a problem in the conservative side of things. Uh, of the message versus the business side of things, because there are a lot of motherfuckers out there who see someone who has a powerful voice, who people gravitate towards, and the bit the business side of things goes towards that, and the message gets lost, and it becomes an empty message. It's kind of how I feel about Protestantism. <laughs> Anyways, all right, guys, like, comment, share, subscribe, support your boy, support a fellow player, a fellow player. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging. Um, And uh, last but not least, DBAP, don't be a pussy willow. In fact, your feelings, because your feelings just don't matter. Love you guys. See you kings on the flip side. Bye.